Hello friends! This is meant to be a really low-tech, low-fidelity introduction to artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and a bunch of other terminologies that you guys probably have heard of. So this is going to be like level 100, 200. This is meant for ML beginners, and uh, we're just gonna jump in. So first, you know, thinking about the historical trends, uh, AI is not new. It's been around for decades. The term artificial intelligence was coined in 1956 at my alma mater, Dartmouth College. And so when you're talking about AI and machine learning, you're gonna run into people who have been doing it for 20, 30 years. But the reason that it has taken off in the last decade or so has really been coming down to computational power, access to algorithms and libraries, uh, you know, new research, and then um, access to the data. So it's really started to do that growth in 2011, when in uh, 2013 we started to see some more big tech players come in, and really in 2015 you can see that the slope of the growth has really changed. From 2015 to middle of 2019, um, venture capital invested $60 billion into AI startups. And if you kind of look at the trend from 2011, 2013, 2015, 2019, it's, uh, it starts to really explode. And so now we're in, we're in 2020. Um, and ML is scaling like crazy. So I wanted to make sure that you all were equipped with really, really easy introductions into some of this terminology so that when you're hearing it at a cocktail party, online, on Twitter, um, that you're just, you're a little more in the know. So I, and I'm looking at notes again, this is the easiest introduction that we're gonna give. So thinking about the terminologies, AI, machine learning, deep learning. Artificial intelligence is kind of the whole scope of things. Within that, machine learning is a subset of AI. And then within that, deep learning is a subset of ML or machine learning. Um, the, the very easy way of thinking about it is AI is this computer is doing a human thing. Um, machine learning is this computer is learning. And deep learning is this computer is learning in a specific way. That is pretty much it. Um, I want to actually first start with, um, mm -mm -mm. again, just looking at notes. I'm going to first start with the breakdown between supervised learning and unsupervised learning, because then it's an easier transition into those other terms. So when I say supervised learning, the first word that should pop into your head is labels. Supervise, labels, supervise, labels. Hopefully that'll make the connection for you all. Uh, okay, so supervised learning, I always like to think of the analogy of like a, a manager standing over your shoulder, and you're really telling the system, telling the computer um, what that data is. So you're feeding the system tons of examples. You're telling the system what is right, what is wrong, what is A versus B versus C. Um, and the whole goal is to train it on a set of known data, of labeled data, and then give it something it's never seen before. And it's able to kind of uh, reflect on the original data set that it knew about and tell you something about this new piece of data. Let's talk about an example because that is way too big. Let's say that you are uh, looking at a customer support system and the data input is email. So you've got 10,000 customers who are all sending in tons and tons of emails. And let's just say that you want to make this really easy. All you want to do is label um, which emails are angry and which labels are which emails are happy. And I always think about, you know, what is the business value of these labels? And let's say that for every, you know, when an angry email comes in, you want to reply a lot faster. You want to send it to a human. Whereas when a happy email comes in, maybe you have an auto reply or maybe you save it to your fan mail or you, you know, post it online or whatever it is. Your goal is to separate angry versus happy. So let's say that you take 1,000 angry emails, 1,000 happy emails, and you've manually gone through and labeled these 1,000 angry emails as angry, and you manually gone through and labeled these 1,000 happy emails as happy, and you feed the system these 2,000 emails, and you said, I know what's angry, I know what's happy. It trains up a model based on what it's seeing in these emails. It could be looking at the length. It could be looking at punctuation. It could be looking at word choice. Um, you're, you know, not necessarily telling it what to look at. You're simply giving it the label, supervised label. Okay. So you give it the, the two labels and it has 2000 emails that it's like, I know exactly what this is. You give it email number 2001. It has never seen this email before. You send it to the system. It compares it to the 2000 it's already seen. It compares it to the model that it has created. And it gives you a new output, inference, 
answer uh, for what it thinks that 2001st email is. So an example output might be happy, 89% confident. And so that confidence score is really giving you a sense of, of um, how similar it is to other happy emails that it's seen, and it's taking a guess. Uh, again, machine learning, AI, all these things, it's never going to be 100% um, accurate, and so you want to know how confident that output is. So again, you're, you're able to send it some new data that's never seen, it compares, and it gives you the output saying happy, and so now you don't have to send it to a human. Um, when we talk about uh, the confidence score that you know it is providing as that answer, uh, sorry, not the outside of the confidence score, the literal label of happy, uh, some terms that you guys might hear around that could be like answer, inference, uh, but mostly like tag, class, classification, and um, yeah, that's that's a good wrapper for for supervised learning, unsupervised learning. Remember, we said supervised label, supervised label, supervised labels. Unsupervised, remove all labels. Labels don't exist. We have no idea what we're looking at. There's no manager over your shoulder. You know, there, there isn't that direction. And so what unsupervised learning is, is really providing a data set to the computer, to the system, and it is doing some form of organization without you telling it how, uh, what, what to organize it by, right? Like, like a label. So let's say that you take those same 2000 emails you have not told it what's angry. You have not told it what's happy. You just send in the 2000 emails. You walk away, you grab some coffee, you come back. And what an unsupervised algorithm could be doing is clustering. Clustering is a very popular unsupervised algorithm. And so it could be taking those 2000 emails and creating 50 groups of similar emails. Um, and everything has to do with, you know, how close the emails are to that to that main radius. Uh, so let's say that, you know, there are 50 different circles. I'm making this very easy, but it's mapping around 50 different circles. And kind of when you're looking at this group, you have you don't know what actually um, uh, forms that group. You don't know what the theme is. Maybe it's all about basketball. Maybe it's all about California. Maybe it's all happy. You don't necessarily know what the label for that group is, but you know that the computer is trying to tell you that these are similar. And the closest, the closer it is to the nucleus to that, like um, ideal email, then the more similar it is to that, to that ideal email. And kind of as you go out, it gets uh, less similar. So again, it doesn't do the labeling for you. You can have a human go in and kind of look at these groups, but a use case for this one might be that you have, you know, 10,000 customers and you're trying to group them similarly to figure out, uh, how to better target them or what to, um, you know, maybe what to sell them in, in your next, uh, email. So unsupervised, no labels, no manager, you go, you leave it alone, and uh, clustering is a really great example of that one. Okay, going back to artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning.